Welcome to Gold and Silver, Diversification in the Age of Uncertainty, featuring Wall Street Journal best-selling author Robert Wiedemer in Washington, D.C., and from the Monarch Studios in Newport Beach, California, your host, Mike Maroney. Hi, my name is Mike Maroney, and I am coming to you today from the Monex Precious Metals Studios. We'll be interviewing Bob Wiedemer, the author of Aftershock, Aftershock Investor, and Bubble Economy. Bob has been working with Monex on a new uncertainty index, which we feel is, without a doubt, a very, very positive tool for investors to not only have, but to understand. And Bob, how are you today? Good chatting with you. Doing great, Mike. Good. Now, we had had an opportunity to speak a little bit at the beginning of the week, and obviously you were looking at the jobs number as being an important number, and everyone thought that we were going to see 185, maybe even 200,000 jobs, and then the jobs numbers disappointed. But you're still a believer that the, the Fed is going to potentially raise rates. Yeah, I just think it's hard for the Fed to back off raising rates when the unemployment rate just hit a 16-year low. So I think they are still going to raise rates. Um, but let's be clear that that job number was a disappointment, especially because ADP just a couple days ago, earlier in the week, had had uh, uh, suggest they they said that we have two hundred forty thousand jobs created, and uh, the uh, uh, whereas the government says one hundred thirty thousand. So one hundred thirty is slow, uh, but again, unemployment rates down. I think we're going to see a Fed rate hike. However it does open the question of how many more we're going to see this year, especially if some of the slow drop job growth continues. Well, now the interesting thing, after the jobs number was released today, we've seen both gold and silver pop to the upside. Silver hitting a high of yep. about 1755, gold all the way back up to 1280. So it looks like this uncertainty is causing some safe haven money to come back into the precious metals markets. Oh, no question. Uh, and, and there's no question there's still a, a continued feeling of uncertainty. Yeah, the market's going up. Nobody's sure exactly why. Uh, but there's uncertainty out there. After um, uh, President Trump's trip to Europe, he comes back and pulls out of the Paris uh, Climate Agreement. Uh, that clearly is something that has riled up uh, businesses and a lot of people. And uh, although I don't think unexpected, uh, it, it, is, it, it is not exactly what a lot of, uh, of, of companies wanted, uh, certainly those involved in green energy, which are very much a part of the stock boom and stock bubble like Tesla. Uh, so uh, I think there is uncertainty out there, even if it's not reflecting in the market, the stock market right now, gold showing it. Um, cl clearly an uncertain environment still, no question. Now, Bob, you're in Washington, D.C., and we get... Um, some of the information and some of the news if you watch certain channels as far as what's happen happening in our political arena. But the more I listen to any sort of news station, obviously there is some extreme volatility out on the horizon as far as this whole political situation and what's going to happen with Trump, what's going to happen with these investigations. This isn't something that you see stopping anytime soon. No, uh, certainly, and I'm afraid the Trump administration doesn't either. I mean, they're thinking of a big shakeup in the administration. Uh, some of the uh, investigations are now focusing on Trump's son-in-law, uh, Jared Kushner, and that's got to be upsetting to him personally. That's got to be upsetting to the administration because he's been the one person that's kind of been uh, a rock of sorts uh, for Trump to lean on that's sort of been above all the, the problems. And now that he's under investigation, that's uh, just another uh, bit of uncertainty. So, no, I don't think these political issues are going to stop or the, the political uncertainty. Uh, we're still not seeing movement on tax cuts. Uh, so, no, there's certainly that political uncertainty is going to continue. And, and if anything, with a special counsel now being appointed, um, Robert Mueller being appointed to look into the Russian investigations, probably you're going to see more problems, not less, at least for the next few months on that regard. So what we have is a situation where our president made a lot of promises um, in order to be elected, and none of those promises have come to fruition, yet the price of the stock market is at extreme all-time highs, and many people said that, oh, well, it's the, pro the Trump bump. And now, well, we don't need Trump anymore. Now it's based on earnings. But we're not seeing this massive amount of growth here in the U.S. based on the jobs and everything else. So if things start to slow down, what 
What's in the Fed's game plan on the long term if that were to take place? Well, long term, uh, I think the Fed's game plan, or, well, let's just say the Fed never has a game plan. I mean, they never predict a recession. Uh, I don't think they have a game plan if the stock market falls. I think they'll just react uh, out of panic, as they have in the last seven, eight years. There was no game plan to bring our uh, are, are to print another $3 trillion, you know, in, in the last uh, seven, eight years. So, again, game plan, none. Uh, reaction to a stock market falling, they're going to print money. I mean, it's really the only tool they have to, to do anything. Uh, they will print money uh, when the stock market goes down. And as you said, uh, uh, there are a lot of issues out there that, that I think make it likely the market's going to take a fall. Trump has not come through on any of his promises yet, and uh, although it certainly quite possibly will, uh, it, it could be a while before that happens. Earnings were up in the first quarter, uh, but whether that can continue in an environment where you have uh, slow retail sales, not just in department stores, but across the board. We've been losing jobs in that area now for three or four months in a row. You have automobile sales slowing down. Uh, you've got restaurant sales. You've got other consumer uh, spending slowing down. Uh, you know, it's it's not clear we can keep up earnings growth that we saw in Q1. And again, most of the Trump bump came before we knew of earnings growth. Uh, they're always expecting high earnings growth. So this time they got it for a quarter. I don't think they're going to get it going forward. I think the likelihood is that the market will fall here at some point, uh, probably dramatically. We've already seen difficulties in oil. We can talk about that more later. But oil is not doing well. And obviously last year, that's what kicked off a big fall in the stock market uh, in February or January, February of last year. So uh, when that happens, yeah, the Fed's going to print money. That's their big tool. That's their big weapon. That's what they're going to do to pump it back up. So Bob, what we've seen in the last few years is the China, excuse me, the Japanese, the European, the U.S. central banks have basically printed about $13 trillion worth of additional paper money. And the amazing thing in many people's eyes is they thought that would cause inflation. But the bottom line is stopping and potentially pulling back on the number of bonds or selling some of the bonds that are in the Fed's portfolio, that actually may be the catalyst that makes interest rates go higher, makes it much more difficult for the U.S. government to borrow money, to sell bonds, and inevitably the Fed has to come back and start buying paper. And then is that when the jig's up and people finally realize that it's broken and I better own precious metals? I think that's better said at the beginning of the end. Uh, yes, maybe not immediately. I, I mean, I think when the Fed prints money to push up the market, the reaction's going to be, hooray, the market's going up. Well, that's great. But there is an underlying uncertainty, an underlying unsettling uh, context for that market increase. That, that is the, that they're printing massive amounts of money to do it. And yeah, Bank of Japan and, and Europe is doing the same thing. In fact, they've now printed as much money as we have. Because uh, remember, we stopped a little while ago, about a year plus ago. They've been kept printing right along every month, 60 to $70 billion a month. So they're getting up there. We're, we, we've held for a while. If we go back to it, I think initial hooray. But yes, absolutely. That's, that's the beginning of the end because that's really what people are hoping never will happen again. When it does, it kind of says the problem's not uh, just an emergency or, or short term. It's chronic. Um, if the Fed has to constantly keep printing money to keep the market up. So yeah, uh, that's, that's the beginning of the end. You, you've got it, Mike. Well, I'll tell you what, we've seen gold, which pulled all the way back down to 1217. Silver pulled back down to 1610. Gold's up $70 off the lows. Silver's $1.50 off the lows. Investors are starting to pile back into the precious metals market. I think a lot of bond buying was being actually uh, hailed as safe haven buying, whereas I think investors are starting to realize those bonds are not a safe haven. If anything, I need to have a non-correlated asset, and precious metals definitely fills that bill. But, uh, Bob... Yeah. Let me add one thing, Mike. A bullish sign, just to, I hate to interrupt, but just a bullish sign on gold is the fact that it, it went up, as you said, but it's going up. Uh, it started with the market going down in mid-May, but it's kept going up even though the market's rebounded. I, I find that very interesting, and I find that a, a bullish sign 
uh, for gold right now, the fact that it, it can continue to go up even though the market's gone up as well. Again, I think underlying that, that fundamental uncertainty, and as you say, uh, not seeing bonds as the alternative safe haven, but, but something like gold as a non-correlated asset as a safe haven. Fantastic. Well, Bob, great speaking with you today. Needless to say, we are doing everything in our power to try to get people to diversify somewhat out of maybe some of those overvalued stocks they own into something that in our eyes is undervalued for the long term, both silver and gold. I think if the investors understand your uncertainty index better and really take a deep look into the different variables that you talk about, I think everybody will realize now is a great time to own precious metals. Thank you, Mike. All right. Bob, have a great weekend, and we'll chat with you soon.